Hey guys, John here from More Jeepney, and we'll be playing and testing out this solo mission. I understand that uh, in some places there is some sort of quarantine which uh, prevents people from going out and playing face to face. So, this is one way we can enjoy our models, especially the ones that we placed effort into painting. So let's test this game out. So here in sort of this solo campaign, you start off as a low rank uh, military guy or whoever you are in that certain faction that you have chosen. And they have given you this simple task of apprehending three individuals or criminals. So you simply place the criminals in the location based on the spontaneous combustion uh, layout of the map. So we have one criminal here with sort of a uh, raccoon with a gun. We have this other criminal here, which is a big green guy. And we have this other guy here who is sort of a well-known criminal. His name has something with a star on it. So you have to try to apprehend them. They may have some information that you need. For this mission, I'll be playing with the Eternus Continuum and my opposing force will be the March World. This one here will be objective one, the one in the middle, objective two. And the farthest one over here will be objective three. To keep things simple for now, my opposing force will be the contents of the March World starter. With the additional two models, I placed another hunter and a fighter dusk wolf. For you, since you haven't earned that much resources yet, you will be playing with the exact contents of your chosen starter. In this case, I'll be using the Eternus Continuum. Objective 1 already starts the game with an enemy escort of the squad. While the rest of the 5 points are deployed within 5 inches of the enemy corner. Over at the opposite corner, this is where you deploy your forces. You deploy 5 points of your forces here. Your objective is to get your models within 1 inch of the objectives and attack them with a melee attack. A successful attack captures them or subdues them. All objectives have a defense of 4. Enemy models may in turn go within 1 inch of the objective and spend a special action to release the objective. Here you use your standard deck as usual, whereas the AI uses the full deck. In the AI's turn, if it is time to play a Cypher card, simply draw two cards and play if applicable, with priority given to the card that has been drawn first. So it doesn't matter if it makes sense or not, if it can be applied, if it can be used, then play it. If there is nothing to use it on, then simply discard the cards and no cards are played. As an additional challenge, you are only allowed to spawn each of your units twice, except for the squad that can be spawned three times. So let's say, for example, if this uh, Scourge dies, I'm only allowed to bring it back one more time. After that, it's you can't do it anymore. Okay, it's gone. It reflects the fluff that you really have limited resources. And in the campaign later on, you may purchase more units which may uh, bolster up your force. For enemy AI activation, priority is given to the unit that is nearest your models. If there are two units that are equidistant to your models, the one with the highest POW output will be given priority. When an enemy model activates, you roll a d6. If you roll a 1, it goes towards objective 1 and that's its priority. If you roll a 2, objective 2. And if you roll 3, it goes towards objective 3. If you roll a 4, 5, or 6, it becomes a hunter killer and its objective is to go straight to your nearest model and attack and try to kill your models. Since you are the raiding party, you always start with the initiative. Right guys, John here from War Jeepney and let's try out this solo mission. Let's go off and start with post round 1 and of course you start with the initiative. So I'll put a charge on my trusty reavers and then I will use displacement index and bring them nearer there. Okay, so 9 gets him there and I get to redeploy my other guys. 
And then let's go and shoot those rangers. Okay, this guy first to that guy. Mat tree with a charge. I mean rat tree with a charge. So I get three in. Defense of the ranger is one, so I get two in. Power tree, two in, two to kill. And that ranger is dead. Next, this guy to that guy. And I get five. Five versus defense of three. Gets two, so three in. Two to kill. And that second guy is killed. We need reinforcements! We need reinforcements! Last reaver attack. And I get two. Ranger defense, and he gets one. So that's one in. Two to kill that last ranger. And that last ranger is killed. So this is the AIQ for spawning. So since that squad was killed, they're placed at the end of the queue. Next activation, Marauder will make a five inch move there. Get him around there. And these guys will spawn a gate. Put it somewhere there. And let's put two arc on it. Now you know what? Let's put three arc on it. So Marcher World's turn. Uh, you activate the units that are nearest to the opposing force. If the ranger team here survived, then they would simply move in and try to kill those guys, but they're gone. So we now activate these guys. Now, what you have to do now is determine their AI first. So for the Dusk Wolf, for the AI, it's a four. So that means uh, it will go towards your units and try to kill your units. If it was, uh, if he rolled a one, its objective is to secure objective one. If it was a two over there, if it was a three over there, but four, five, six, it simply goes over to try to kill the nearest unit, which would be right now, I think those guys there. And since it is the nearest among the two, arc priority goes to it. So for the playing of the ciphers, we have here the full deck and let's see if it'll be able to use any. Cryo lock, no. Plexus Densifier, which is for a squad, so no squad in play. If the Ranger squad was there, he'd use that right now. Otherwise, no Cypher cards for the Marcher Worlds. Forgot to roll the AI of the Hunter, AI of 1, so it's going to secure uh, Objective 1. Duskwolf has already moved 6 inches there. This guy will follow. Okay, so that's where their move gets them. They both activated. His objective is to get to number 1. For the cipher cards, after activation, let's see, algorithm, no, that doesn't work, null collider, none also, so no cards played. Actually, uh, divination algorithm is until the end of the pulse round, so it will apply. So it goes to the biggest threat and the nearest model, which is the dusk wolf, so this goes on to the dusk wolf. So for the gate, it throws a gate towards there because it always tries to bring the gate aggressive uh, towards you. And AI always applies tree arc to the gate. Okay, so for my turn, back to the AC turn, I simply put Plexus Densifier on this squad. I put an arc on the Scourge and move it that way. And I don't play anything else and back to the Marchers. Okay, so for uh, turn two of the marchers for post round one, uh, ready everything. Put an arc on the nearest model that is a threat to you. So that goes there. Play the cards and see if anything applies. Nope. And Duskwolf will now activate and its objective is to hunt me down. So it will go up here and try to get a shot on those guys. So the Dusk Wolf has moved here. So how the AI works with its arc is it will try its best to use its arc to try to do its mission. And its mission is, of course, uh, to kill you or try to destroy threats. Now, since it can spike to move nearer, so I will use this spike three inches so it can get to my gate, so it can use its ripper against my gate. Then when it shoots with its real gun, it will spike also to kill off a target. So it's spiked to move forward. It's now within melee to my gate. 
So in this instance, it will throw off a melee attack against the gate, put range attack down on those guys there. If they are killed, then the next target would be the Scourge. Ripper attack on the gate, and it gets 4. Gate defense of 3, and that is 2 in for the Duskwolf. 5 to remove an arc from the gate, and no. So it works with its uh, highest power melee, then it goes to its highest power range weapon. In this case, it uses the railgun on those guys down there. So we're looking at Rat 4 with one arc, and I get 5. Nearest Reaver's defense, 2, so it's 3 in. Duskwolf will always spike to reduce armor, so uh, 1 to kill, and it's very dead. So I rem remember that these guys actually have 4 armor, but it's, so that makes it now 3 to kill, but still, dice was enough to kill that guy, so that guy is dead. Battle rifle to that guy. And I get 5. Reaver defense of 3, so 2 in. He's in armor 4, so 4 to kill, and he's still killed. Duskwolf is now done, so... The Ranger Hunter is going towards objective 1, so he'll move 7 inches down this way. So Ranger has moved 7 inches that way. Now let's see what comes out of the gate. Let's roll the dice, and that's 4. There are only 2 viable options for the remaining arc, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it's the Weaver. So you deploy them towards the nearest threat, and the nearest threat would be my Scourge. So the first that came out is deployed here, followed by the Weaver, which the next nearest spot it could take would be that one. So this gate is now gone. Nearest viable unit that could throw a gate would be the Hunter. So Thrunter, Hunter uh, throws a gate here with three arc on it. Pulse round one, turn three of the AC. So I have cleared out the activation markers. I placed an arc on my Scourge. So let's play Ascension Catalyst and see if I can bring him over there. All right, so it gets my Jack there. And let's go hit that Duskwolf with a Wrecking Claw. Wrecking Claw versus the Duskwolf, Mat 4, with two arc on. I get a 4. Duskwolf defense, so I get one in. So, pow four plus two pow for the arc and one in. Oops, I need one white dice. Here's that other white dice, so it's still nothing, so I get one damage in. Hollow Phage Cannon on the jack, so I get one, two, three, four, five, six. Defense of the Dusk Wolf is 3, so I get 3 in. Hollow Phage Cannon, POW 4, 3 in. And I get 1 damage with Corrosion. This time with the Nailer to the Dusk Wolf, I get 5. Dusk Wolf Defense, so I get 5 in with the Nailer. Uh, POW 3, 5 in. It has reduced armor, so 3 to kill. And Duskwolf is destroyed. Get her to the Hunter. And I get one. Hunter defense and Hunter saves himself. For my second activation, I just move the Marauder towards that criminal there called Starlord. And I'm not going to play uh, any other card, so now to the Marcher Worlds, but of course, allow me to spawn stuff first. Yeah, let's bring out my Weaver and put him right there. So Marcher Worlds next, uh, Ark goes to that guy because he is near the Weaver. And he will activate first, uh, since the threat is now there, shortest distance would be to come back out here, so he'll move out here and try to get a shot at something happened nope and 
remove an activation from solo so yeah that sniper will get its activation out wait I was wrong with that it actually had an arc so it can spike to move an additional three if I bring it out here it will get clogged and it will be able it will stop won't be getting any further that's just about six inches but with nine inches it can get all the way out here so that's where it's going so 9 inches brings it out there, and nearest uh, model threat would be the Scourge. So Railgun to the Scourge, and it gets 5. Scourge defense is just 2, so that's 3 in. Railgun, POW 5 with 3 in. So that is 1 damage, 2 damage to the Scourge. Shoots with its Battle Rifle. And it's a miss. So the hunter's objective was to get to objective 1. So 7 inches gets it as close as, as it can to objective 1. Then it will attack the nearest target, which is the Scourge. Rat 6. 1. Scourge defense. Come on, Scourge. And yep. And of activation ciphers. So annihilation vector. And overdrive. Yeah, none of this will apply right now, so no cards are played. Okay, so let's see what comes out the gate. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This guy comes out. And the next uh, one point that can come out would be the Hunter. So that Dusk Wolf goes there, Hunter goes there, and that gate is gone. So for bringing out the gate, simply bring out the gate as aggressively as you can for the AI. In this case, it will bring the gate right there. And let's put a tree on it. So this is the end of pulse round one. I haven't uh, been able to take any objective yet. Doesn't look too good for me. So AI seems to be running well for this scenario. So let's now start with pulse round two. Okay, for Ark, you know what? Let's take a risk. Let's put Ark on the jack. I'm going to play Annihilation Vector. Okay, let's go against that Dusk Wolf first. So, Mat 4 with 3 Ark. I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wow. Defense of Dusk Wolf versus 8 is 1, so I get 7 in. White dice first, so POW 4 plus uh, 3 dice for that plus 3 strength and POW for the arc. And I score 2. And here's the 7 red dice. So that's 1 damage, 2 damage to the Dusk Wolf. And it has system failure. For a system failure, it's ranged weapons. Next attack of Annihilation Vector to the Hunter. And I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hunter defense is... Oh, wow, 5. So I miss. So for its uh, Wrecking Claw, I'll leave this guy alone for now. But I need to clear a path for the Immortal Weaver to get to the objective. So I'm going to hit the Hunter. Wrecking Claw to the Hunter. Whoops, one more red. So I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's roll the white dice first. Anyway, it's just a 2 to kill, and that hunter is killed. No need to roll the red dice. Okay, hunter is killed. And now let's put some range shots to that guy. Hollow Phage to the Dusk Wolf. Yikes, just one. Dusk Wolf defense, and I miss. Nailer to the Fighter Dusk Wolf. I get three. Dusk Wolf defense. And he also gets three. Hitter to the hunter. And I get three. Hunter defense. Two, so I get one in. Two to kill. Hunter is killed. Okay, let's see if we can take the objective. So that is mat 3, and I have 3, 
This is the objective's defense of four. Come on. Yep, I have captured that little raccoon. Okay, I'll play Aggression Theorem. Let's see if I can take this guy with Corrosion. All of Age Cannon Attack. And I have four. Duskwolf Defense. And it has one. Five, four, three in. I get one damage and Corrosion on this Duskwolf. I'm recalling the last Reaver. Post round two, turn one of the Marchers. So it appears the two Duskwolves will be activating. This is the nearer one though, so it gets the arc. Uh, good thing it's got a uh, lock on it. Play my playing of cards. And target friendly, it may make one melee or ranged attack. So aggression theorem will go to this Duskwolf. So in this case, it could attack both. But uh, when playing the AI, simply uh, roll for which one would make you more miserable. So in this case, uh, maybe killing my Scourge would be worse. So it's Ripper attack versus my Scourge, and it scores a 3. Scourge defense, and I make a 3, hey. So it now activates and tries to hit my guy again. So it's Ripper attack, makes a 5, 6. Scourge defense is only a 5, so it gets 1 in. Pow 4, 1 in. Not enough to take down the Scourge. This Fighter Dusk Wolf now activates, so which one is nearer? This one could go here, but this one is nearer. So it will move, that's enough movement to get right there. Uh, Mat 4 on the Ripper. Gets 3 in. Defense on the Scourge. That is a Fighter Dusk Wolf, so second attack with its Ripper. 3 in. Scourge defense. Yes. Now it attacks with its Impaler. Gets 2 in. Scourge defense versus that 2. And it misses again. Right. Fourth melee attack. Impaler again. Gets 2. Scourge defense. And I lived through the four melee attacks. Wow, this guy's lucky. And let's see if he survives the real gun. Real gun attack. Four. Uh oh. Or the scourge defense. And real gun gets two in. Power five, two in. Four to kill my guy. And my guy survives. He really is a lucky scourge. Okay, Marcher World's playing of Cypher. This is the one card left. Malediction Rubric. And Encrypted Command. So Malediction Rubric will play. And he will throw it at my Weaver. Focus 4, sitting on 3. Gets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Weaver Defense of 2, so 4 in. Armor 3, Weaver. And the Weaver is dead. Okay, let's see what comes out of the gate. Four. One, two, three, four. The squad comes out. And another sniper. Okay, that doesn't look good at all. Alright. Now back to the AC. Okay, so for arc. I'm gonna put an arc on this gate. And now have three there. And then playing for Cypher cards, I will play Impulse Inducer. So I get to activate this Jack again. Alright, Wrecking Claw to this Dusk Wolf. Wrecking Claw attack. Four, and just four. Dusk Wolf defense, and gets two, so I get two in. That Dusk Wolf has Corrosion, so six to kill. Alright. This Dusk Wolf is destroyed. Oh yeah, I previously uh, forgot for uh, the AI to put out a gate, so this guy puts out a gate right there with the usual tree arc. Let's now continue with the Scourge attack. Let's see if we can hit this guy with a Holophage. Holophage attack. I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
Thus both defense is zero, seven in. Fourth kill. Yep. Dusk Wolf is destroyed. Oopsie. Alright. Let's now shoot the hunter with the nailer. Nailer to the hunter. I get three. Hunter defense. Oh, I missed the hunter. Okay, I'll spend one arc to turn my splitter into a spray weapon and spray down that line. Back to the nearest guy. And I get three. Defense of that guy is two. I get one in. Two to kill. And the first guy is killed. Shit. Next guy in line. And I get two. Defense of that guy. And the third ranger. I get one, two, three, four, five. Defense of that ranger is two. So I get three in. Power 4, 3 in, 2 to kill, 3rd ranger is killed, so this guy is removed, 1 survivor. Marauder here will continue towards that objective. Okay, so the uh, Marauder gets as far there. I spawn, this guy's out from the gate here, so my Reavers are back. Uh, he's back there, and I throw a gate out with 3 there. Okay, Marcher Worlds, uh, post round 2, turn 2. Let's roll for the AI of this guy as it came out. Let's roll for the Sniper first. Okay, yeah, that's a 6. I was a Hunter Killer, so he'll go ahead and attack these guys. And for the Lone Ranger, 1. So as to try to secure that objective. Arc has to be placed towards the nearest, so Arc goes to this guy here. And let's go see what cards they can play. For their cards... Let's see. So this one came out first. So this one goes to that ranger. Ranger will activate, go here, spend an action to free the objective. And then this guy will activate and go ahead and shoot the scourge. Rat 6 gets. I only rolled 5 dice. And still two in. Defense of the AC Warjack and the Hunter misses. Playing of Cyphers after activation, Annihilation Vector, Instability Equation, yup, will go to this guy and he will target the Immortal Weaver. Cypher attack versus the Weaver gets one, two, and three. Weaver defense and in cover, so he gets hit by one. Top four with one in, so gets one damage. Blast damage to the jack, no damage to the jack. Blast damage to their own gate, and no damage to their own gate. So what do they spawn out? Five. One, two, three, four, five. That guy goes out, and between the two jacks, one, two, three, four, five, six. It is the scout that comes out. So first guy comes out here, and the jack comes out there. Okay, I put an arc on the reavers over there, because they're going to go ahead and get that objective. And then I will play Encrypted Command on that solo, the Marauder, so it can go and get that objective. Okay, let's see if they can capture this criminal known as the Destroyer. Two. Objective Defense. And I didn't capture it. Second guy. Come on. And I get four. Defense. And one, two, three, and I have subdued Mr. Destroyer. Next, this guy moves up and see if he can take on Star Lord. Mat four, get two versus defense of four, and ah, oh, wasn't able to capture him. 
I'll play Pyrokinetic Surge on that Warjack. Focus Force hitting on one arc. I get six. Defense of that Jack is two, so four in. Power three, four in. I get just one damage on the Jack with fire. Marcher World's last turn of post round two. AI of the uh, Hunter. Will be a hunter killer and the warjack. Also out to destroy my guys. Hunter is near because it came out first. So Orc will go to the hunter. Playing of the cards. Draw one. Draw two. Displacement index came out first. So I don't think that will really work here. It'll apply. So next we have is pyrokinetic surge. And that will work on the Weaver. And it'll go ahead and shoot my Weaver. It's Coalition Weaver attack. Gets one, two, three. Marco Weaver defense in cover. And yeah, the Hunter activates and shoots my Jack. Rat six and one arc. It gets five. Defense of the Scourge. And so that's one in for the Sniper. Of course, AI will spike. To reduce my armor. So armor 3, 3 to kill. Ooh, my jack survives. I'm naming this guy Mr. Lucky. Duskwolf with the fire moves forward and will attack the uh, Immortal Weaver with its Ripper. And it gets 4 in. Defense of my Weaver would be three, so one in with the Ripper. Three to kill my Weaver. And my Weaver survives. Railgun to the Weaver. Two. Weaver defense. Two also, wow. So that leaves the battle rifle to the Weaver. Three. And Weaver defense. Three, wow. Oh wait, now I know why I'm lucky, because I was rolling over. It had fire, so actually it should be rolling less. So I guess that's why we were surviving. So playing of cards, Cryolock. Okay, yeah. Impulse inducer, so Cryolock will come in first. So he will Cryolock. Well, the Weaver isn't activated yet, so the Weaver then. Let's scrap that because it won't really matter. It's the end of the pulse round, so even if he gets a cryo lock, it'll all get removed. The only thing left for them to bring out is the fighter dusk wolf, so we'll remove two arc from their gate here. And the fighter dusk wolf comes in right there. Pulse round three. I only have this guy captured. This guy still has to be captured. And I captured this guy, but the ranger freed him. So let's see what happens now. Pulse round three, I'm putting arc on this guy because I need to take that objective. And let's see what cards I can play. Okay, I'm going to use a velocity projector on over to that jack. Cypher attack. And I get one, two, three, four, five, six. Jack's defense gets three, so I get three in. Pile four, three in. And I cause one damage. Activate my jack and let's see if we can take out the fighter dust wolf before it causes any problems So let's hit it with the wrecking claw first You know what let's do the hollow phage first that way I can use the spike with the wrecking claw just in case so hollow phage I get two Defense of that dust wolf So I miss the dust wolf Nailer to that fighter dust wolf. I get two three four Defense of the Dust Wolf, and I get two in with the Nailer. Pile three, two in, and I don't hurt the Dust Wolf. Void Splitter on the Dust Wolf, and I get four. Defense of that Dust Wolf, so I get three in with the Splitter. Splitter damage, I cause. Wow, two damage to the Fighter Dust Wolf. 
Now the wrecking claw. I get three. Fighter Dusk Wolf defense is zero, so I get three in. Pow four plus two plus three in, fourth kill. And this Fighter Dusk Wolf is eliminated. I'll now activate this guy and go one, two, three, four, five, six here. And let's see if I can get the spray down that way. Okay, spray to the hunter. Let's see how lucky we get. We get three. Hunter's defense is two. We get one in. Psychokinetic hood is power four with one in. Two to kill. Hunter is killed. Two to Dusk Wolf. I get one. Dusk Wolf defense. None. Ooh. Four to kill that Dusk Wolf. And almost, but not. Hunter is the nearest to the Weaver, gets the Ark. Play cards. Ascension Catalyst to the Jack. Yep, that will work on the Jack. What's the next one? Uh, Plexus Densifier, so it's Ascension Catalyst to their Jack right there. Okay, I think I forgot to roll for fire in this guy. But for this Jack to survive, we have to assume that the fire is gone. So let's give the AI that bonus. So this one, let's say, was removed. All right, rat six to my immortal weaver, and gets five. Immortal weaver defense and one, so four in on the sniper. AI will spike as usual, so I'm now only armor two, four to, actually just two to kill the immortal weaver, and immortal weaver is killed. Next, this guy activates to shoot my. Scourge. It has an arc on it. So, shooting the Scourge, it gets a 1. Defense of my Scourge. Oh, gets 1 in. So, 4 to kill my Jack. <laughs> oh, it kills the Jack. So, this guy is gone. What cards would it play now? All right, Aggression Theorem. Can anyone do it? Okay. So no one is in line of sight to any of my guys. So yeah, won't be played. Only thing left for them to spawn is a Hunter. So Hunter will spawn here. And this gate is gone. And this guy is the nearest. Actually, that guy. So you'll throw a gate inwards. So turn two of the last pulse round for the AC. It's nothing really I can do. So I'll move these guys over here and see if I can beat up on that gate. Okay, so we move there and the two other guys are placed. Let's attack the gate. Matri, they have an arc on them. And I make four. Gate defense is two, so two in. Pal five, two in. And I do remove an arc from the gate. Second attack to the gate. I get three this time. Gate defense, zero, three in. Pow five, three in. And one more arc off the gate. Last attack on the gate. I get one. Defense of the gate, one. So it's got one arc left. Activating my solo. Let's see if I can capture that. I get six. Defense of the guy you have to subdue. And I have that objective. For the Marcher Worlds, nearest is this guy, so he gets an arc. And let's see what cards they can play. Velocity Projector, no. And the next one would be Divination Algorithm. So he doesn't have a ranged weapon, so next activating, which is the nearest, will be the Jack. So the Jack gets this one. Coalition goes, Coalition Weaver goes there and attacks the Reaver inside. Weaver Matri with an arc gets one. Reaver defense, zero, so gets one in. 
battle staff to the kill and that reaver is killed with five move the farthest it can go is there so it can just get one shot in through the door towards my reaver there real gun to the reaver and that's four reaver defense no cover so that is a scout and there is no cover anyway so two so two in two to kill the reaver reaver is killed Railgun blast. <laughs> so it's the last turn of the third pulse round. Now I don't think there's anything I can do to get that objective. There is nothing they can do to get to that objective with my guys blocking there and the gate clog there. And there's nothing they can do to get that objective where they get that. So I'm calling it. I have captured two guys. And each objective gives you three points. So I have now six points to bolster up my army for the next mission. Okay, so that is the uh, solo mode. Uh, it was fun for me. Of course, I do realize that sometimes the AI would do something that you know a normal player wouldn't do. But you see, that's the objective of, of the solo game is to reduce thinking on your part so that you only decide for your side and it pretty much becomes automatic for the other side and at the same time you have to to discover and how you can beat the AI maybe you bring a unit closer to force him to activate units that uh, he wouldn't normally activate so that's just uh, part of the game and it allows you as I said earlier to play with models with the models that you have uh, built placed into effort into painting and to enjoy your models, especially now when, you know, most places you can't go out and play face-to-face -face with other people. So anyway, uh, for those of you that can go to Tabletop Simulator, as uh, promoted by some people, I say go for it. But for those who can't and, you know, they want to get some sort of game in or some games in, then you're pretty much free to try whatever solo mode you want to go. And this one is my version, so... Maybe you can test it out and try it out. So that's it. So everyone, it's uh, late already here. So good night or good morning. And uh, hopefully you get to play more games.